G'day and welcome, my name's Cautious Pancake and today let's have a look at the best new block to use for zombie force fields in the 1.0 release. Since many people are familiar with force fields, let's jump straight into looking at the new block, then later in the video I'll go over my second favourite block and the specific case in which I'd still use it, some alternative blocks just for a different look, and then do some testing to check out some questions around the trench component of zombie force fields. A quick shout out before we begin to Rooster Gold, since he was the one that hit me up to flag this new block, a massive thanks to him for the testing that he's been doing. The new block that you're going to want to look at using for your force fields is the storage cube. A favourite block used in wine cellars throughout Nava's game, it's time to put it to better use by placing it above a trench to force zombies to run around elsewhere. Note that to use it, it has to be rotated so that the boxes are facing up, since sideways or upside down, the block will be fully pathable to zombies. Also, don't forget the number one rule of force field defences is that you still have to give the zombies a path to get to you. They get very unhappy if you don't give them this option. The main advantage to the storage cube over the rest of the force field blocks is that the storage cube is a solid block which means it takes up all of the space within the area allocated. Other blocks do not use up all the space, and as a result, zombies, especially on Horde Nights, can sometimes fall down into or glitch through the top blocks and end up in the trench below, where they will start to smash on the walls and cause damage that you don't want. With the storage cube block, since there is no free space, it should prevent this glitch behavior just with the top row of blocks. However, to be even more sure, you can fill the trench below with the same block and it will still work. You can fill the under layers with weaker frames or wood blocks as they are just there to take up the space and just make the top layer strong. I've never bothered with this fill approach before since most of the other force field blocks are thin and small, but it does mean if there are any random demo or cop explosions near your force field that take out some of the top blocks, the blocks below should still allow the force field to continue to work correctly without any risk of the zombies falling into the trench. And while filling the trench might seem like it takes more blocks to do, on a normal force field nearly all of the other combinations of blocks require two blocks to make it solid enough for you to walk and drive over, so the increase isn't as bad. The only drawback to these blocks that I've found so far is when using them for vehicle access. Due to the holes on the top, when riding across them with pretty much any vehicle, you get one of the worst bumpy rides of any of the force field blocks that I've used before. So I don't recommend this for your driveway or garage entrance, unless the bumpiness doesn't bother you, of course. For your vehicle access point, you want to stick with what is now my second favorite force field block, and that's the arch three meter tip. In 1.0, you can still arrange them like always with the two blocks rotated upside down on the normal level and then two blocks rotated at the bottom of the block space on the level above. This makes a nice smooth bump that is barely noticeable when driving or riding over. It still operates perfectly fine as a force field, even though you'd think it looks fully pathable. Now, if neither of those styles are for you, let me run through a quick look of some of the other options that you can use for force fields. Okay, now that we've seen some design ideas for force fields, let's jump into some testing. It's kind of common knowledge at this point that you want to go with a trench that is two blocks wide and four blocks deep. And while I've definitely gone more than two wide in previous builds, I've never really tested whether you can go less. So to see what the limits are, let's first summon in some zombies, get some bows. You can see they're going to run around the outside, bit of rage mode there. And they come to the block that we've left as the entrance. Good there, you should be, no, you're still raging. That's fine, you can deal with that over there. 
So that's our trench that was four wide and two blocks deep. Sorry, four deep and two blocks wide. This one over here, same again, two wide, but three blocks deep. Let's get them back in, but we'll go ferals this time, just so it's a bit faster. Same again, we're gonna split, run around, a little bit of rage mode at the back, but otherwise, everything seems to operate just the same. So a three deep trench is viable. This one is a two deep, two wide, or two wide, two deep. Let's give that a shot and see what happens. Got a bit more rage mode. We've got him trying to sneak across, which isn't so good. That's where they can actually cross the force field a little bit and go into rage mode. Let's see where you went. You've done lots of rage mode. So you can see we're getting a little bit of weird behavior. Excuse me, birdie. A little bit of weird behavior on this one. And even again, He's going to rage motor here, crossover. So I don't think a too wide, too deep trench is one that you want to do. That's certainly starting to exhibit some bad behaviors. And this one, obviously, the last one on this series is a too wide and one deep trench. Which <laughs> doesn't function at all as a force field. So that's definitely not going to work. The other one I guess we could try is going back to four deep on the trench is a one wide. And in this one, I'm kind of expecting it to mostly work. Again, we've got a little bit of extra rage mode behavior, but those two paths successfully. And then after the bit of rage mode, that's worked. So I think we start to see bad behaviors happening once the trench gets only too deep and it can function at one wide, but obviously at zero blocks wide, you're back to a normal block and you're gonna be, or back to a full concrete plate and you're not gonna work. So I think the limits that we've kind of settled on for the community at four deep and two wide are still pretty good because they give extra redundancy should things get broken. So if you lose a block, say in your three deep, two wide trench, and one of those blocks turns into a rubble block down at the bottom of your trench, all of a sudden that section is going to be a too deep, too wide. And we already saw that that started to cause some weird behavior over there. Similarly, going from a too wide to a one wide, whilst it will still function, if you lose any blocks here and that rubble becomes stuck in a bad spot, you're going to start to lose your force field behavior. So the too wide is really there to give redundancy in case of issues. You can certainly go with a probably at the minimum a three deep one wide trench is going to actually work until a block breaks or something bad happens and all of a sudden then you're going to start to lose your force field and zombies are going to come through so for safety start with at least a three deep but probably sticking with the traditional four deep two wide force field is the way to go a couple of other things to mention when it comes to testing is that the zombie force fields work just fine for the bigger animals. If we summon in a dire wolf and get his attention, he's going to run around just fine. Same if we do a zombie bear. They will respect the zombie force fields all the way through. What you also need to consider when building a base with a zombie force field is that you still need to worry about line of sight issues. For example, spider zombies are not gonna care about your zombie force field. If they can see you, they're still gonna try and jump straight over. In that case, he didn't manage to pull it off. That's actually not what I expected. There you go, that's quite interesting. Let's try that again with a few of them. Go some feral zombies from a little bit further away. There you go. So they can jump over. That's a bit more like what we expected. Similarly, if we do a test for a zombie cops, if you do nothing to block line of sight, they are going to spit at you. They'll still run around the force field like they should, but you need to break line of sight for the spit or you're going to be dancing the whole time. So now that we've run those tests, I just want to quickly come back and look at the storage cube once more. 
Earlier in the video you would have seen that a one thick wide layer of the storage cube over a four deep trench caused some interesting piling issues that was kind of similar to the two deep two wide normal force field using the three meter arch tip block. So the last test I want to run then is to see whether a three deep trench is sufficient for the storage cube and if so how many layers of storage cube should be filled within the trench. Starting with three deep trench and just a single layer of the storage cube blocks on top. Let's get our bows back in again. And this time they'll run just fine. But you can see that this guy did run over the storage cubes. So showing that the one thick wide maybe isn't enough. Moving on to the two thick version. Let's see if that fares any better. Most of them have come this way. And too thick is looking pretty good. As a result, I think the three thick in a three deep wide trench is probably going to be a little redundant. It should function exactly the same as the previous test. And we'll go to just reinforce that it doesn't matter, but it will fill the trench up, meaning no glitches are possible and no zombies can end up down the bottom there where you don't want them. And if any blocks are blown up over the top, you will still have a too thick layer underneath. If say these blocks got blown up by a cop or a demo, then you've still got a too thick layer down below. And if we wanted to see how that looked, after losing a few blocks, it should function just the same. And sure enough, it does. So there you have it. The best new zombie force field for 1.0 is a two block wide, three block deep trench filled with the storage cube block. Hopefully you found this useful and have a chance to use it on your next playthrough. Please give this video a like if you did and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks to my awesome supporters on Patreon. Thanks to you for watching this video and as always, happy building.